The Chosen. If you've talked to any Christians lately, you've probably heard someone mention it. Maybe you find it annoying, maybe you're intrigued, but today I would like to give you my thoughts on it. This will be a spoiler-free review. Uh, I guess if you don't want any spoilers at all, then my review is watch it. Yeah, that's it. But anyways, I will only be showing scenes from the first season and other scenes that don't give too much away. Now, you might ask, how can there be spoilers for a TV show based on the most read book in history? While true, you're only going to find what you've read about in the Gospels, it is... well, let's talk about that in a second. But first, let me just give a bit of a run-through of what we are talking about. The Chosen is a TV series set during the first century in the Middle East and is based on real events written about in the Gospels found in the Bible. It covers the story of Jesus of Nazareth and his followers. It's headed by Dallas Jenkins and managed by a small production house. This project is pretty much completely crowdfunded, which just means that a lot of people and groups are giving it monetary support. The reason this is needed is because it's completely free to watch. Uh, it can be played from a free app that can be cast to a smart TV or even on the mobile device the app's on. But anyways, what's my goal today? Hopefully I can answer questions for those that have probably asked one of these two questions. Is it worth my time? Or is it a production from Lucifer himself? I am making fun of some people a little because I have absolutely no idea why some people think that the show is evil. Well, I actually do know what some people think because I looked it up, but everything they're saying is just lies and half-truths. I found something written by one person which I won't even link to because it's just twisting everything to make it sound bad. For a few examples, this person mentions that it's sacrilegious that John the Baptist sometimes doubts Jesus in The Chosen. He did. John wasn't without flaws, just like most other quote-unquote heroes in the Bible. In Matthew 11, he grew very impatient with Jesus. Making John imperfect isn't sacrilegious, it's accurate. What else? This person also mentions that it glorifies Mary like Catholics do, and if I may quote, in Catholic belief, Mary is above Christ. What? Look, I've got problems with Catholicism myself, but if you actually think that Catholics believe that Mary is above Jesus, then you are absolutely insane. And let me tell you, the show does anything but glorify Mary. She's just a normal mom that birthed the Messiah. Um, there's more here, but all of this that I'm looking at in this quote-unquote article, which if you can call this an article, then you can call I Think I'm Going Bald a musical masterpiece. Um, this rant is just misreading actual scriptures, creating cultures that don't exist, and taking quotes from the show out of context. I haven't really seen much of any Scooby-Doo stuff, but I always remember this scene. No! Hey, you're doing that thing again where you take everything I say out of context. You're trying to make it look like I think Coolsville sucks. No! Don't record that! All Fred Jones had to say was, I think Coolsville sucks. Don't take things out of context and run a mile with them. And of course, half of this letter complains about how sinful it is behind the scenes. This is probably one of the most complained about issues. Like, the main studio that houses The Chosen is Mormon. The actor that plays Jesus is a devout Catholic, which this guy hated with a passion. Uh, some Orthodox Mosaic Jews aid in the writing process. And there are many on the team that are just non-believers. Just... <sighs> I'll link down below this video that Dallas Jenkins speaks in, which by the way, he's made many of them because as the director he feels like he needs to clarify things that random people have made up that just aren't true. 
but in this video he covers this denomination sharing and if I may quote because it would be wrong of me to ever say that any one group believes any one thing altogether and basically that just because someone is of a different denomination doesn't mean that they don't believe in the same Jesus as you and many Christians think like that you think that denominations other than your own are going to hell and sure the Book of Mormon has more inconsistencies than the X-Men universe, but that does not mean that all Mormons believe in a different Jesus than you and I do. I actually really want to talk about this, but I would rather save it for a video of its own. And I don't really want to try and explain why haters are wrong, but I would rather explain why I like it so much. Love it, really. So why don't we just close the hater answering section with don't believe everything you read on the internet and I'm going to put my foot down here and say that if you haven't seen it then you have absolutely no right to judge it. Anyways, like I said, I don't want to focus on the bad. So The Chosen. I'm trying to think back to when I first watched it. I probably wasn't the most enthused. I was like is this just going to be focused on a bunch of sad people? I was just not sure. And to be honest, I don't think there was a specific moment where I snapped and realized it was an amazing show. For the first season, I just got a little more and a little more interested. And then in the second season, I got much more interested. And by the end of the second season, I was dying to have the third season come out. And after watching six episodes of the third season, I watched the last two episodes in the theater. And now I would probably say that this is my favorite show of all time. So why do I like it so much? A few reasons. The main reason this show is great is because it fills in a massive amount of historical, cultural, and visual context that also coincides with emotional context. I think we can all agree that the Bible gives us what we need. It is God's word, and it's all we need to live a Christian life. But the thing is, don't you want more? Take Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, but there's so much behind it. How hard did he weep? How long did he weep? Did he hug and comfort someone else? And the more important question, do you as the reader feel sad with him? No, you probably don't. Like, who the heck is Lazarus? Jesus is sad that he died, so I guess he was cool or something. Don't you want to understand what was going on in that moment? And you're allowed to fill in the gaps in your mind, so why can't they be filled on screen? I mean, as far as imagining Jesus goes, we already have this, and this, and this. Oh, no, wait, not that one. That's a different cult. And this. When I watch The Chosen, the gospel is just so much easier to understand. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil it, but in the show, you get to see the fishing, the eating, the traveling what it's like to be a tax collector, what it's like to be a zealot. You learn a ton on Jewish customs, expectations. There's lines devoted to discussing what Jews should wear, lines devoted to questions about holidays, and there's clarification on so many actual Bible verses. Some scenes are even devoted to one verse, like when the Bible says that the Pharisees plotted against Jesus. What does that mean? It shows it in detail. It even introduces characters that only show up later in the Bible, but the show takes time and letting you get to know the character before that event happens. So it's not like that character just started existing when it was their time to die or get healed or something. And the show totally helps you feel the feels and understand their heartaches, their revelations, and all the good and bad tears. This is why I don't want to spoil it, because I want you to feel everything in the moment and realize how beautiful it is. Because like, when your pastor reads gospel scripture, you will not be able to easily dismiss some interactions as casual again. It's already happening to me, like, the Bible Project guys quote a verse in the most casual way, and I'm like, 
There's nothing casual about that. That that scene brought me to tears. And there are many scenes like that. So many parts of the gospel you can just shrug off with no emotion. Like there's one part where you think almost nothing of it just reading it. But when I watched it, I was legitimately terrified. I was like, oh, this is actually really serious. And then there are a multitude of scenes where they just pertain to my life so much that they made me cry. I find that I can relate with so many characters, specifically the disciples, obviously. That's the beauty of it. You realize that the disciples were regular people that were followers of Christ, just like you. Sure, they eventually became the best leaders that Christianity has ever seen, but they didn't start like that. They were just like you and me. And talking about emotion kind of leads into the problem that some people have that Jesus cracks too many jokes. Why wouldn't Jesus crack jokes? God's intent is for us to be joyful, so of course when God becomes a human, he would want to spread as much joy as possible. Some of them are really good as well, like some might be the best jokes I've ever seen in film. But another big reason it's a great show has more to do with that it's the gospel. And I believe that the gospel is better for introducing the Bible to new believers, and that it's also better to show, not tell. Because here's the thing, let's take one of the first stories in the Bible, and a very important one at that. The covenant with Abraham. A new Christian is reading it, and it says that Abraham takes some goats and cows and cuts them in half and lets the blood run in between them. Then God, who is just a fiery pot, walks through them and then promises Abraham some stuff. If you actually understand what's happening, then you know that it's actually an amazing story. But to a new Christian, or better yet, someone on the fence about becoming a Christian, most of the supernatural stuff is the craziest stuff they've ever heard. And yes, there is supernatural stuff in the Gospels and in the rest of the Bible, which are fact, and supernatural stuff is even in the first episode of The Chosen and continues. But when you see that God himself was human, almost, emphasis on almost, just like you, that's easier to follow. And for me personally, that's one of the things that keeps me in Christianity and keeps me believing in it. God was one of us. It makes God feel more like a historical figure than just a being we can't reach. He, he's, like, he's like Abraham Lincoln or Gandhi or Napoleon or Eddie Van Halen, but he was God and he was here. And I feel like The Chosen would help anyone realize that. The Chosen can be used as an evangelical tool. And of course, as the beginning of the series mentions, you still need to read your Bible. But sometimes a book that's thousands of years old doesn't really interest people. But many people love movies and TV, and I, I probably wouldn't suggest tricking them like, hey, you want to watch a normal historical biopic? But, but it might help a non-believer friend be more interested in the Bible. But also as important, it could strengthen any current believer's faith. Well, hopefully this convinced you. I do have more I would like to say. I thought maybe what would be better would be if I made a commentary like videos for each episode. They won't be actual commentaries, but I would enjoy if I could go into detail about what I think. Unfortunately, I might not be able to get to them anytime soon, but I look forward to it. Anyways. I know that it would be wrong to require people to watch a series, which is probably why I don't lead a congregation, but I think that every Christian should give The Chosen a try. And if you don't like it, then I, I don't understand it, but that's okay. My hope is that everyone can enjoy it. Thank you.